look, listen. We are surrounded by miracles and wonders. For instance, rivers. Born in the snows of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the Yuba River brings life to the Northern California valleys below. How do we know? How do we understand rivers and the life they harbor? And how do we pass that knowledge on to our children? Science is one way. Art is another. This is a music composition class. These teenagers are part of an experiment in learning. They'll spend a year of weekends devoted to both the science of rivers and the art of music. This class at Music in the Mountains is called Young Composers and it's usually devoted to music theory and composition. But this year's challenge is different, to explore the connection between music and river science. Can they compose music that reflects what they'll learn about the Yuba River? And why? What's the idea? There are definitely parallels between math and music, but between science and music, it's not really been explored very well to my knowledge. Let's talk about salmon through music. Let's talk about the rivers through music and see what we can do. And that's how it began. We had a meeting and it's evolved to what it is today. I think it's still evolving. I think the exciting thing is that it's, it's really kind of unknown and these kids are sort of charting that right now. The test will come at the end of the year. Their challenge, to turn river science into music, river music. Rivers are crucial to the history and social fabric of Nevada County, California. Located in Nevada City, two institutions are collaborating to explore the connection between music and science. Music in the mountains and the Sierra Streams Institute. It's late autumn, and these young composers are about to experience a unique and wondrous event, the spawning of Chinook salmon on the Yuba River. But will interpreting this experience through music deepen their knowledge and appreciation? Kids learn better and are more fascinated with their subject matter when they can see how it really how relevant it is to the rest of their world. And I think that the one thing that sometimes is missing in that in our traditional way of educating children is that sense of rele relevance. Like, what does this mean to me? How, why is this meaningful to me? What do salmon create down here? And has anybody heard of the name of what they're creating? They're creating a nest-like feature known as a red. And that's R-E-D-D. -D. So the red is not- For the Sierra Streams Institute, this will be a first taking a bunch of music students on a rafting trip down the Yuba River. So what we're going to see, we're going to see the females. Basically what they're going to be doing, they're going to be laying flat on the gravels, and they're going to be popping their tails up, creating a vacuum, which is going to pick the gravels up, and they're going to move with the current. Stroke and... Each stage that the salmon goes through has um, various rates of, of population decline for the salmon. Do you see how the, that white water is forming right there, right there where there's rocks? And all this area is pretty turbulent. When the water is more turbulent, more oxygen from the air gets dissolved into the water. And so if there's more oxygen in the water, then the eggs will definitely uh, be healthier and, and have more success. I come from a very scientific background and am working with this incredible music organization and I'm seeing what can happen when two organizations that have uh, different missions that are complementary can work together. When they hatch, Dan's gonna come around, he's gonna show you kind of the progression. The eggs actually start with uh, an eye spot, um, which forms, and then 
they'll hatch. Okay. So they'll be out of it. And so I think that curiosity is a huge common theme throughout science and music. And that leads to creativity. And they're going to have to fend for themselves at that point.